Hey, hi, <laughs> hi, all you poor people. It's me, Michael Dieterich. I'm just a poor boy. Merry Christmas. No, no. Merry Christmas Eve. No. Merry Christmas Eve in July. Shh, shh, shh. We have to be quiet because the kids are finally asleep. You know, they won't wake up for school, but tomorrow for Christmas morning, they'll be up at five o'clock, bright eyed and bushy tails. And those little <laughs> and those sweet, adorable children will want to go and open their presents. But now they're asleep and it's daddy time. And I'm having a little Christmas juice. <laughs> You know, I love Christmas. Uh, I love Christmas. <laughs> and I love Christmas juice, too. <laughs> mm. Mm. I like so many things about Christmas. But as a kid, <coughs> I remember I wanted to go to Santa's workshop. Because I thought about all those cute little elves where building the toys and painting the toys and putting together the toys for all the girls and boys and Christmas joys and all the noise. Look, I am rhyming. <laughs> but now that, yeah, don't think about it anymore because the kids just want a PS5 and a iPad, an iPhone, I don't know, all that stuff. So... That fantasy's kind of gone, but I still think about Santa's workshop all the time and what a magical place that would be. And what it would be like to be inside Santa's workshop. So, for Christmas Eve in July, my present to you is... That's two presents. Number one, we're going to go inside Santa's workshop. Oh my God, you guys. That's wow. And then... I'm going to make a painting for you that is a painting from inside Santa's workshop. It's like you're going to be there. It's going to be wow. And I'm going to talk about Christmas memories and how they celebrate Christmas in Holland. And I wrote a poem for all the lovely girls. No, there's no boys. It's the girls from the collaboration and I'm gonna sing a song but luckily I already recorded the song so it won't be totally f I won't be beverage impaired when I do it so everyone I wish you Merry Christmas in July Merry Christmas Eve in July and I take you now with the magic of YouTube to Santa's workshop. Mm. Ho ho ho! Welcome to Santa's workshop. I am making toys for all the little. Oh, I cannot do that voice for a whole video. <laughs> <coughs> Hey everyone, so here we are. Uh, it is actually just uh, a, a week before Christmas Eve in July, the 24th of July, uh, and that's when these uh, videos are going to be shown. I have been very, very busy. I had my initial idea and uh, I saw something on YouTube and I didn't change like my major concept, but I did change my pour. I'm gonna do my pour a little bit differently. Uh, it's gonna give me a little bit of time. I did want to varnish my piece before I finished it off, and I don't think I'm gonna have time for that because I don't think it's gonna be dry in time. We'll take a look at it, uh, but I will assemble <laughs> my piece enough for it to be ready for the video. So, because uh, I still have, I'm gonna have to edit it, of course. If you're listening to me now, it got edited. I'll talk a little bit about Christmas and Christmas in July and Christmas in Holland a little bit later. But what did I start off with? I went to the hardware store. 
because before I actually get to mixing and pouring tonight, I do want to do a little prep on some stuff. I bought some molding. Um, some of the pieces are just flat with a rounded edge like this. Um, I have this tape here just so I can move them without getting my fingers dirty. That's a little trick I have there uh, that I'll be using. Um, I have this piece here and I've got two more like this that are smaller like this and then I also have this now I don't know if you can see it I'll see it in the side camera you can see this molding it's got an interesting shape to it uh, I taped off part of that and you'll see why later and then I cut this and sanded this I'm I just want to get these painted first so I am going to do that in time lapse and during that um, I will probably tell you something a little bit about Christmas. Here we go. In the Netherlands Christmas is celebrated on the 25th and the 26th of December. We have two Christmas days. This is nice because then you can go to your family for example on the 25th and to your partner's family on the 26th. Christmas here is a lot less about Santa Claus and more about a day or two days to gather with family, have some good food, and play some games. Now, the Coca-Cola image of Santa that we celebrate in the United States is actually based on St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas, also known as St. Nicholas of Myra or Nicholas of Bari, was a early Christian bishop during the Roman Empire of Greek descent, and he was born on the 5th of December in modern-day Turkey. And the 5th of December, 5 December, is actually the big Christmas holiday here in the Netherlands. I'll tell you more about that later. St. Nicholas performed many miracles. He was known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker, and he's also the patron saint of sailors, merchants, archers, prostitutes and children, brewers, pawnbrokers, unmarried people, and he's also the patron saint of the city of Amsterdam. All righty. So I'm just going to clean this up. I'm going to save this uh, wax paper because I have a feeling I might need to do a second coat on these. So I'm just going to soak this one for a bit, uh, close up this paint. I'm going to let that dry, but in the meantime, I'm going to get to my mixing. Alrighty guys, I'm back. I got my molding off to the side. I see it's going to need a second coat, but that's okay. I have time for that tomorrow. It's important that I get to the pour so it has time to dry. Let's talk real quick, of course, about the colors, which I will put in the description, but uh, it's a little bit different. I'm experimenting. So I have my pouring medium, which is 60% PVA glue and 20% water, 20% my cheap little uh, pouring medium. I buy this in like a dollar store. It's not very good as a pouring medium, but it's a great additive. So greenish blue, great normal color. It's one of the few colors that's just normal tonight. Then I have this. Now this is a mix between Amsterdam's uh, Prussian blue um, phthalo and I used this uh, mauve from Lucas, but I wanted it darker. Oh, there it is. And um, the paints are still leaving a mound but I don't have them too thick tonight. This is mostly Amsterdam lamp black, but I did add a little bit of the Prussian blue just to help tie it in together, yeah? I didn't want it to be like pitch black. Now this is a real mix of three colors. It's two-fifths Amsterdam pearl white, it's two-fifths Artist Acrylics metallic white, and then there's 10% just good old titanium white in there. Um, it's leaving a little bit of a mound. That's good. And then I have, surprisingly enough, now you love, know I love my gold, but this is not deep gold tonight. I have light gold from Amsterdam. And it's um, also just a little bit of it. I'm going to use it very sparingly tonight. Now, here's the big, one of the two big things. This is my base coat. Yeah, it's fairly thin, uh, but it's still leaving a little mound which is great but this is the secret I learned about for this technique this is 
gesso, yeah? Some of you call it gesso, gesso, what you want to call it, uh, used mostly to uh, prime your canvases, but most professional canvases don't need it. It's already primed. This is 70% gesso, 30% water, yeah? Now, I did add a little bit of the Amsterdam pearl in here just because I felt it was still a little bit too thin and this took a lot of stirring to get it to the right consistency yeah so this is the big risk uh, but it turned out great what I saw now the other thing that turned out great is I have here some clear spray varnish gloss yeah and I'm actually going to spray some of this into all of the colors and the base yeah now if it turns out we'll talk about it afterwards but what i saw was absolutely incredible so just gonna stir those in it's a swipe we're gonna do today just a good old-fashioned swipe but if everything works out and i did this right the cells are going to appear like instantly. Alrighty, this is a 50 by 50, yes, 50 by 50 canvas, nice and taut. Give it a quick check. Lovely, lovely, great. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up, you probably can't even see them here, but up at the top, I still have those paints there. I'm going to get them out of the way, the uh, bottles, and then we're going to get to putting the base. Alrighty. I'm going to lay down this base. I am going to add just a little bit more of the varnish because she had very, very small cups, I realized. It's not an exact measurement, but I'm just trying to figure out like she went psh, psh, in her cups. So I think I got four times as much. So I think I needed an extra. Psh, psh, psh. Yeah. Here I go. Now, even though the Dutch celebrate Christmas on the 25th and 26th of December, these days are more about feasts and families than presents and Santa Claus. Although, some Dutch families now celebrate Christmas with gifts as well, especially younger families with older or no children. Now, when you think about the history of America and the founding of New York by the Dutch, it's no surprise that many holiday traditions crossed over from the Netherlands, and many things we associate with the American Coca-Cola Santa Claus are actually based on Santa Claus, a.k.a. A. Sint Nicholas, the Sint, the Goede Sint, and the Goed Heiligman. This legendary figure is celebrated on the 5th and 6th of December in the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Northern France, and some parts of the former Dutch Empire, including Aruba. Now, he's an older and stately man with white hair and a long, full beard. He wears a traditional red bishop's outfit known as an alb, but it's easy to see where Santa Claus got his red and white color scheme from. Santa Claus is also known for his long ceremonial shepherd staff with a fancy curl top. Now, like Santa, he travels over the rooftops delivering gifts via the chimney, but instead of a sleigh and reindeer, the Sint rides a large white horse named Amitigo. Or at least he did, because in 2019, Amitigo um, retired and was replaced by a new horse named Ozo Snell, meaning Oh So Fast. Sinterklaas carries a big red book which records whether each child has been good or bad in the past year, which is undoubtedly where Santa's naughty and nice list come from. On the evening of the 5th, children leave their formerly wooden shoes next to the fireplace, although these days it's probably a radiator. Children leave a carrot for Santa Claus's horse because, let's face it, he's doing the heavy lifting. This is reminiscent of American children leaving cookies and milk out for Santa, which would explain why the synth is thin and Santa has a weight problem. If you're good, you'll receive gifts like chocolate coins and letters, mandarin oranges, traditional treats like marzipan, paper notes, speculas, and assorted candy. Although these days, many children receive a larger gift akin to a Christmas present. However, if you're bad, you'll receive a lump of coal, be whipped by Santa's helpers, and then placed in a burlap sack and dragged back to Spain. Although this part of the legend has been phased out through the years. What a shame. And now, during the swipe and while I embellish the piece, I'd like to recite a poem I've written called The Night Before Christmas. T 
was the night before Christmas, but then in July, and seven sweet gals plus one naughty guy had closed all the windows and locked every door and gathered supplies, preparing to pour. A long line of cups and popsicle sticks and colorful paints all ready to mix. The canvas was taped, now one final pin. They turned on their cameras. Time to begin. They whipped up their golds and their greens and their reds while visions of Christmas time danced in their heads. When somewhere outside there arose such a clatter, they took off their gloves to see what was the matter. Away to the window they flew like a flash and ended up getting some paint on the sash. They each grabbed a rag to clean it up quick when all of them suddenly noticed St. Nick. Now Holly, now Cindy, now Kelly and Yanya, on Michael, Camille, on Zore and Donna. They each stared in awe with a sense of confusion. Had varnish fumes caused a shared group delusion? He was dressed all in fur, which was covered in paint, but he smiled at them all without a complaint. A bag of acrylics was flung on his back from titanium white to ebony black. He was chubby and plump like all jolly old elves and the girls thought of Michael in spite of themselves. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work and passed out supplies then turned with a jerk. He gave us a smile, placed a hand on his heart and told us our gift to this world was our art. And we heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy pouring to all, and to all a good night. Ho, 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 ho. Now you probably still have no idea what's going on. This is going to dry. Tomorrow I'm going to hopefully add a, a, a paint embellishment first. And then I have a big embellishment on top of that. Yeah? But I'm going to leave this for now, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty, guys. As you can see, the painting is gone. Uh, I was worried it was going to take time to dry, but thanks to the, I think, the gesso, it dried really fast, actually. I was worried that it might dry too fast and we might get some cracking and crazing. No, it's got some texture to it which I don't mind at all, it looks lovely. My only problem is that to get this video in done in time, I'm not gonna be able to resin the piece before Saturday. So I'm gonna skip that step for now and I'm gonna go back and do it. So I'm actually not gonna completely assemble my piece uh, because I'm gonna need to resin it. You'll understand what I mean in a bit. So you remember those uh, pieces of wood, that molding I showed you in the beginning. There were the regular uh, kind of like a flattish ones. These are here. They still have their tape on them. Uh, they've had a second coat, but I still see a few little spots here and there. Again, it's not a huge deal. I can also touch it up later, I think. Uh, so I am just going to take the tape off and these are ready to go. Now you may remember those other molded pieces of wood I had uh, that had the interesting pattern in it and I had taped off about one quarter of the molding. You'll see them here. You'll see that's taped. And the untaped portion, I painted that red. I had to give it two coats. Then I let that dry and then I taped the red part, undid the, uh, the tape that I had originally put on and I painted that gold and we get a piece like this. Now the gold, I think it's still very um, yeah, uneven looking to me. So I'm gonna give that one more coat real quick. All right, everybody, from this point on, I'm going into time-lapse mode, but don't worry, I have some Christmas stories for you and a Christmas song until we get to the final piece. Here we go.
As a kid, I loved waking up on Christmas morning and going downstairs with the family. The first thing we always did was open our stockings. Now, practical things like socks and toothbrushes were always to be found, but there was also candy and gum, lottery tickets, cologne, a couple of Christmas ornaments, small toys and knickknacks. But then it was on to the big presents under the tree and the stockings were quickly forgotten. Now, my favorite memory of Christmas was the year I turned 18. My birthday is on the 23rd of December, and that year my mother gave me a huge birthday present, but it was wrapped in Christmas paper. And when I opened it, I was surprised to find it filled with Christmas ornaments. Now, as I sorted through them, many of them seemed familiar, and that's because every year my mother had given me two Christmas ornaments in my stocking. And while I was opening my gifts, she would take them and hide them away. My mother said now that I was 18, I was officially an adult, and she knew someday I would move out, have my own place, and my own tree to decorate. And now, thanks to the best gift I ever received, all I would need was some lights and a tree. And 33 years later, and a continent away, I still have all 36 of those ornaments. I love everything about Christmas, oh, but if I had to pick my favorite thing, it would have to be Christmas music. Oh, I love it. I love classic spiritual pieces like Oh Holy Night and carols of the 40s and 50s like Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. But after that, there really aren't any new Christmas songs. Oh, I mean, sure, I can laugh at Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. And actually, I love All I Want for Christmas is You the first 20 times they play it every year. But other than that, there really aren't any modern Christmas songs. Oh, and if you're thinking Last Christmas by Wham, I am sorry, but that is not a Christmas song. It's a song about a breakup that just so happens to take place at Christmas time, but it has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas. I mean, you could change the title to Last Easter and nobody would notice. It would make no difference. When that song comes on, I turn off the radio instantly and wait. Oh, it drives me nuts. But other than that, I love Christmas music. Now, back in 2014, I was working at American Comedy Club Boom Chicago, and their brilliant musical director, David Schmoll, approached me in November saying he had written a new Christmas song. I was intrigued. An original Christmas song? But what was it about? I gotta tell you, his idea was absolutely brilliant because there are so many songs about Christmas, but there's not a single one about Christmas Eve. So, late one night in November, I went to his home studio to record. Now, in order to get the laid-back, jazzy sound he was looking for, he gave me plenty of alcohol and smokables, and then I recorded. I'm pleased to say that this year, he remastered the entire track, and it sounds even better than before. So, since it's the 24th of July, it's officially Christmas Eve in July, and as I finish off my piece, I'd like to ask you to please enjoy Christmas Eve, written by David Schmoll. Oh, 
gonna have a house full We'll start cooking at the break of dawn Friends and relatives will come by With side dishes and pie And we'll all get our food coma on You know we'll probably run out of places for people to sit And it's gonna be a hot mess of noisy delights The kids will open their gifts while the adults talk politics and we'll be up washing dishes till after midnight But Christmas Eve is just for the two of us No place to be No reason for a fuss Just you and me And the last slice of key lime We'll watch a Charlie Brown Christmas For the hundred million times Now, as is typical of the Christmas holiday, we always run out of time. And I think it's a shame that I didn't have as much time. I bit off more than I could chew, but I'm still really, really happy with what I have. Now, if I had more time, I would have resined my piece to give it a more glass-like effect. And then I could have finished attaching my molding and hung it on the wall for you. Right now, it's just on the table and everything is sitting in place, but you still get the effect. I want to make good on my promise of my gift to the beginning of my video to take you inside of Santa's workshop and present to you my piece, Window to a Winter Wonderland. I really love the idea of this Christmas-like window Looking outside, the snow is falling. Santa and his elves are rushing to get everything finished. And of course, even the window is decorated in the Christmas spirit. I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas in July and let there be peace on earth and goodwill to men all year round. Thanks for joining all of us here at the Christmas in July collaboration. Special thanks to all of these lovely, lovely ladies. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to everyone. And God bless us, everyone.